was at work the other day and I was sitting in my office and I uh, clicked on the internet and this news article came up. And the headline was, Hell Accepts Everyone. <laughs> and I didn't read the article or go into the article or read anything about it, but it really got me thinking is that there's no requirements. Pretty much can be accepted and go to hell at any point of what you choose in your life and what direction you go. And that would be the opposite direction of picking Christ and following God and leading to that. But it was just that open policy of being accepting everyone and allowing everyone of who and what and how they choose and the choices they make. And it just got me thinking about, you know, the, the Jewish people when God be, set them aside to be his people, they knew where they're going. And so they set their traditions and their religion and all the laws and everything they had to where they could find and have that path to God at death and know that their life was set to be with God afterwards. But there's no rules and regulations of saying to have God in their life while they're living and why they're here and the choices they make to have that and have them with Him. And we know that in the temple you had to be free of sin and cleansed and the holy of holy. And they even tied a rope on the guy's leg so that way if he went in there in the presence of God and wasn't without sin, they could pull him back out because he would die. But everything in their life was knowing was moving forward to being with God after they had died and being in heaven. And I think a lot of people in our world look at that and look at that sense of what religion is and about hell and heaven, it's about when you die. And that choice that you make and the choices you make are about at the end. And I know that that thought weighs as you get moving or a crisis comes up or the older that you get or if you get sick or if you're diagnosed with things, these things escalate and those thoughts escalate in your heart about the choices that you made and do you know God and where you're going and the prayer and church and all that. But what about our everyday lives? What about just the things that we do, driving down the road, walking down the street, mowing the lawn, washing the dishes, going to work, sitting in the library? Are we thinking about how God is with us? And how God is working through us and what is God doing for us? And the things in our heart of God, or are we just concerned about the end of the road? Because at the end of the road, there's one path that will accept you no matter what. No matter how you lived your life, no matter what you did in your life, there's that acceptance. And we know that it's not a pleasant place. When we read, we see those things of where... Just dip a finger in water and just give me a, just a drip of water because it's so hot and it's this tortured lake of fire and condemnment. And a lot of churches, a lot of people in religion, they don't want to look at that part of it. They don't want to look at the consequences. They just want to know, well, no, Jesus loves us. He loves us all, regardless of our choices and what we do. But at some point in your life, you have to choose Christ. You either choose Christ and for your salvation, or you don't. And that's a choice that you have to make. And we all know here that if you choose Christ, and in that salvation, there's a whole different life for you. To follow His commandments, to follow His lead, to follow what He taught, it'll lead you into places that you didn't think you'd be and it would lead you into a righteous life if you were to follow those commandments. And that's all possible through the Holy Spirit. 
and working in our lives and working through us and doing the things in our everyday life and in our heart so that way we can know God and have God in our lives as we walk. Not just the end of the road, but in everything we do and everywhere we go. Giving God that glory. Giving Him that praise of all the little things. I saw it the other day and I hit roundabouts. I don't know about you guys, but roundabouts can be the worst thing ever. I try to avoid them. I can navigate them. But other people in there, it's just a nightmare. Yes. So I was going through Burlington, and there's the multiple of roundabouts. And lo and behold, like everybody stopped, and I was able to go. And I was just like, wow, look at that. It was like the Red Sea opening. And I was just like, and I said, thanks, God. Thanks for making it where it wasn't a stressful situation. You know how much I don't like roundabouts and other drivers. And I gave him that thanks. Because in my heart, that's what I felt. It was like I was not having a good day, work, stress, all the things. And I was on my way home and God said, here, here's one relief for you. And it's giving God that grace and knowing that God is working with us, and knowing that that's the Holy Spirit, and knowing that in our lives, those little things, those little reliefs, those little stresses that get taken away, all these things, that's still God. And that's God working through us and working in with us. I still remember when I received the Holy Spirit. Um... I was younger, I was probably about 19. When my grandma had passed away when I was a junior in high school, she would given me the Bible that they had given her when my grandpa died away, so it was through the union. And it had a wood box and it had a Bible to it. And when I was 17, there was no church. There was no Christ, there was no God. I knew God, I would known and knew all the, not the scriptures, but the lessons of a kid and everything that my mom tried to teach me, to, you know, about God and following God, but there, there was no structure there, and so I, I looked at that and I was like, okay, and I held on to it because it was from my grandpa, and it had my grandpa's name in it. So it was from family, but the aspect of the Bible itself was it was just the Bible. When I was 19, I was going through a tough time, and I found that Bible, and it was buried, like, my room was a mess, like, clothes everywhere, and just, and I found that Bible, it was on the floor down somewhere, and I picked it up, and I was going through a hard time, and I just opened it, and I grabbed that Bible, and I still remember it to this day. I didn't know exactly what it was at that time, but looking back on it, it was the Holy Spirit. And I held that Bible through my arm. Just this rush of light came up and threw it into me. And the only way I could explain it to anybody, and I tried to tell my friends, and I was like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what it was is that the essence of the Bible entered my body. And that was the only way that I could explain it. And my friends all thought I was crazy. They're like, you need to cut off. Whatever you're doing, you need to stop doing. And to where I can remember it to this day just as powerful as it was of the Holy Spirit. And from that point, God has guided me and led me to this point and to where the Holy Spirit working in my life, if God and the Holy Spirit hadn't been working in my life, I would not be here today. Because at that point in my life, I did not value my own life. And my path of destruction was going down to the demise of my own life. And so the Holy Spirit and God saved me and brought me through to Christ to know Christ 
and know the grace and love of God through Him. And it's not just at the end of the road of where He's saving you and bringing you into heaven and not into hell. It's every step that you take, every breath that you take. He's there walking with you, loving you, giving you grace, giving you peace, making your life easier. And it may be a struggle and you may have problems and you may not have the perfect, easiest life where rose petals lay out and money's handed to you and everything gets handed to you. But with Christ and with the Holy Spirit, no matter how hard it is, you know that His love is in your heart. You know that He's there holding your hand, giving you a hug, rubbing your back when you need it, and guiding you and giving you that peace, no matter how hard the struggle. That promise was given to us through Christ. We go to John 14, 15. If you love me, you will obey, obey what I commanded, command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. Forever is not just in heaven. It's not just in our life. It's not here and now. It's forever. Is forever. Mm -hmm. So that's that promise is that he'll be with you forever. At that point, if you obey what he commands. We know that Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was, and he was to love God with all your heart and all your soul. And the other is to love your neighbor. And the rest of the laws and prophecies are held together by that. We follow that basis, basic command in our lives to love God and to love each other. All the other stuff falls into place. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and that you are in me, and that I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. We're all with Jesus. Because he's in our hearts. And he's with the Father. And the Holy Spirit is with us. And we're all connected and locked together living our lives as he guides us through what he wants us to do and his will and the things that we need to be doing for him and giving him the glory. I like the part of where it says the spirit of truth. One of those things, if you ever have questions or doubts or worries or concerns, Turn to the Holy Spirit because that's a spirit of truth. That truth in your heart of that love, that grace, that mercy that's given to us by our faith in Christ. We know God. And God knows us. We continue to walk that life. Not so we can just get into heaven and not end up in hell. So we can feel that love. 
did all those things so we could, we could know His love. Everything that Christ did in His life, everything that God's done through, that's spoken through the Bible, and all the prophecies, and all the speaking and teaching, and all the things that have been done, is so that we can know His love for us. Because He doesn't want us to go to hell. He doesn't want us to burn in eternity. He doesn't want us to be miserable and hopeless and feel lost here. He wants us to know His love while we're alive. So that way when we join Him, we know who He is. By His love. When we get in His presence, we're going to know Him. Surely by the love that we feel in our lives through Him and through the Holy Spirit. Like Brody said, salvation of Christ is the Bible. Because that's what God wants. He wants us to be in Him and with Him and walk with Him and know Him. And have Him in our hearts. And have Him in our lives. And to guide us and love us and care for us. So that way all of our burdens just wash away. All of our troubles just seem truly just small and worthless. Because with Him, they are. Mm -hmm. Through Him, there's nothing more that we have to worry about. There's nothing more that we have to be concerned about. We're the ones that get in the way and the ones that worry and are concerned and do these things. And he brings us back around and says, you don't have to. I got you. All you have to do is love me. So you can feel my love. And have that relationship. And knowing the Holy Spirit. And a lot of the things that we do is personal. I can't tell you how your relationship with God is. I can't tell you what your walk with God is or what God wants from you or what your purpose is with God. All I can say is He wants to love you. He wants to show His love. He wants to give His love. And He wants you to love Him back. And I know I've said it before, but you've seen the people out there that have had the worst life and the down on their luck and sick and diseased and all that, but know Christ and have the Holy Spirit and they say, oh, I'm blessed. And you're like, are you kidding me? You're blessed? Then what am I? <laughs> I must be on the top of the hill, on top of the mountain because you're having all these problems that I don't have. That person knows God and has the Holy Spirit and regardless of how bad it is and what happens, they're always going to be blessed. They're always going to feel loved. They're always going to have that in their heart and they can't take that away. Nothing can take that away. So when we're sitting there and we don't have those problems, we don't have those issues, we also are blessed. But to look at the little things and know that God's there and the Holy Spirit's still guiding you. All green lights, thank you God, I didn't need that stress today. You know, we've talked about the Holy Spirit working in this church plenty of times of where people have asked for requests of donations for different projects, different missionaries and different things in there. We got a check for almost right down to the penny. The Holy Spirit is alive, working in this world. We may not see it as clearly as we'd like to because of all the things that are going on in the news and the nerdy news articles and you know, hell, that's everybody in. Whereas the news article is saying the Holy Spirit's alive, working, and wants to love you. That doesn't sell. 
we see all these bad things and all these bad things are pumped into our lives and it seems to be spiraling out of control and getting worse and worse. A lot of people are throwing up their hands of, what do we do? Turn to the Holy Spirit. We turn to God. We turn to Christ. We share that message. We fill our hearts with that love, with that joy, with that grace, with that mercy. And we pour it out on everybody we meet, everybody we see, everybody we interact with. We bring that love, that grace, that mercy to the world. And that's what God wants. He doesn't want us to wait to heaven to make that decision. He wants us to do it now. That way we can bring others with us. All those people out there that are living in that dire and are living in that, that don't have that peace and that love and that rest. He wants us to gather them. He wants us to bring them in by the lives that we live, by having the relationship with Christ, with having the relationship with the Holy Spirit, by receiving it. If I would have taken that Bible and picked it up and received the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit in in my life and enter my life and do nothing with it, it would have been the worst thing that I could have ever done and not share that message and share that love that He's given me. And I would have considered myself to be a heathen at the point that I received the Holy Spirit. And He still loved me. He still loved me enough to save me and all my choices and all my decisions that I was making were wrong and I had chosen and already accepted my fate because hell opened me and the things that I did was where I was going and I already had chosen and I already had decided that that's where I was going to end up. There was no heaven for me, not at 19, for the things that I had done, for turning away from God. And he said, I still love you. I'm still going to save you. I'm still bringing you back in. I don't care how far you've gone or what you think. I'm in control here. And when he asked me to serve, and he brought me to this place and brought me into my service of Christ, I received that light and I received that service. And I gave back. And I continue to give back and I continue to live my life that way. And all I can do is share my message and my walk with God and my receiving the Holy Spirit and give it to you, everyone in this room, to edify your belief, your faith. It is not without doubt. It is not without question. We're human beings. But without testimony, Without us walking the light, without us allowing Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God in our lives and being able to share it with others, they might not know that they receive the Holy Spirit. They might not know that it's God working in their lives. They may just think it's a coincidence they got all the green lights. They may just think, wow, I was healed, I don't know what happened, but I'm glad for it. It's up to us to share so that way they know exactly who it is and what is working in their lives. And the world needs a lot more Holy Spirit, a whole lot more love, and a whole lot more of us giving God to others, sharing the word of Christ. We're all disciples in Christ. We've all been chosen. We've all made that choice. And the next step is to share. And it just may be the simple is, Jesus loves me. This I know because the Bible tells me so. It's 
simple as that to turn somebody's life around and to save them. It's, it's hard walk to walk in Christ in this world. I think someone said it best. Said it's like swimming upstream. Once you make that decision, it seems like you are swimming the opposite direction that everybody else is going. But that's the direction that God wants you to go. And if you don't feel God's love, if you don't feel the Holy Spirit, if you don't have that in your life and your daily walk, continue to pray. Continue to show up. Continue to learn, continue to read, continue to turn to Him, because He'll show up, and He'll guide you, and He'll show you where to go, and what to do, and how to help, and where to serve, and who needs a smile, and who needs a hug, and who just needs someone to listen to Him. We just have to get out of our own ways and let Him work. kind of an unconventional message that I've given today, but it's been weighing on my heart. It's a lot of stress that I have to go through and a lot of things that weigh me down and just kind of keep piling on and it almost feels like you're just weight of the world on your shoulders and I have to learn also to just give it to God. He's in control. He's got the power to give him the glory and the grace and the love and just allow him to work through my life. We're just all truly blessed each and every day. We're all in this room because we've been blessed by God. We're all in this room because we know Christ's love. We're all in this room because the Holy Spirit is guiding us here. So we need to continue to work by loving. Loving one another and loving everyone out there. Sometimes that's a struggle as well. <laughs> Will you pray with me? Mm -hmm. Lord, just thank you. Thank you for giving me the courage to come up here today and share my story and share your word and to express your love that I feel. Thank you for this body of believers and people in this room and the love that they have for you. And just being able to be in this room with them, knowing the Holy Spirit's working in their lives. Just give them the strength to go out in this world and spread your word and share your love and to overcome the hate and chaos that's been created by Satan, guiding everyone to hell. Give us the strength to overcome, to swim upstream, so that way we can spread your word and bring everybody with us, bring them into you, and into your love, and into your grace, and into your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen.